Many of you have guessed that normally when I start a big project like this, the facial hair grows, the hair gets wild, so I wanted to beat you guys to the punch and get a shortened haircut. As I was getting a haircut, <laughs> you guys know, I'm, I don't wear hats. As I was getting a haircut, I could feel a girl like, oh shit, oh, oh, and I felt my hair getting tugged this way and this way, and then you know that meme with that doctor where it just says, fuck my shit up? Uh, please don't make fun of me. This is the best I can do fixing it before we go any further, but I don't want it to distract anybody. What the hell is this? What the hell? It, that's not matted down, that's actually short. <laughs> Rob's got court. <laughs> I got court, I love Marshall Mathers. <laughs> I punch walls for no reason. I wear wife beaters. Uh, I've got a date coming up and uh, it's in a week and hopefully my hair grows out by then. But in the meantime, my date is with this car right here. And so we've got project updates going up the wazoo. That, God, that's a uh, 1960s saying. This is just full force, full feed, full function, it was a good company, uh, all full speed ahead. The nice part is it's all my fault if it doesn't get going from here on out. We have 40 days until LS Fest and we are a little bit behind because of waiting on the subframe, but you saw how good that work was. Here's our current status. We have this subframe that needs to get cut. We've stared at this for hours on end and the engine and the subframe do not like each other. This subframe is two inches below its correct operating height. So we're gonna just cut here, out here, and then obviously the same on the other side, and then reinforce what is actually empty inside of here. That solves one of the two problems. A lot of you guys suggested to take like an old school rotary front cover that has an engine mount here and here, but the amount of power that we're gonna be putting down that's gonna put some weird ass stress on the motor. So we are gonna go with traditional engine mounts back here. That presents its own opportunities and challenges as there is not something to mount back here. So we're probably gonna triangulate from mounts to a spot here, go underneath the engine for you know side to side support and do that. In this video, we are going to get the subframe all prepared for the engine. If we trash the subframe, hey, we're out 200 bucks. A lot of you guys have been suggesting the TRZ, I think it is, TMZ. <laughs> the TRZ, TMZ uh, subframe, which awesome idea. I messaged them, those guys never email me back as a paying customer, not even YouTube. So uh, that's kind of a bummer on them, but that's $3,000 ridiculously priced in my opinion, because you now have to get coilovers or at least shocks that don't fit this. Steering and everything's all different. You have to get a steering rack, you have to, you change the control arms. It's just a complete overhaul and it's meant for drag. It's not even, I, I wanna show the Corvette C5 as a Corvette C5. I don't wanna modify it like that. $200 for this seems a lot more sexy than $3,000 and uh, not even getting a call back or a text back. Just like most of my dating life. But let's go ahead and mark where we wanna cut and get to cutting. The first thing you guys will notice from that point of view is that the engine looks like it's crooked. And uh, that is not Jarrett's problem. It is actually a crooked engine. The whole powertrain is capable of rotating just a slight bit. The reason it's on this side, I put the turbo down and it weighed the whole assembly down this way. That's all that's going on there. It's not the uh, adapter, it's nothing else. That's the correct position. I just can't believe, this is just meant to be right here. That's just, oh my God, that's gonna look so gorgeous when we unveil it. It's just tucked in there nice and clean. We're gonna need full functions adapter for the LS throttle body because this is a drive-by wire car. It doesn't use throttle cables. We'll be doing some magic in here, but that gives us that nice bend for an intercooler down that way. It should end up being pretty symmetrical, so I don't wanna overcut. Why does it not look symmetrical? It's just that twist. I mean, one of the things working against us is the that rotation. Yeah, that's better. Okay, well, we'll uh, measure twice, cut once. Or just say screw it and not measure at all and just see what happens. I like that idea. We're gonna leave the engine in place because we're gonna have to do a lot of uh, re-measurement testing. Now that we've done that, we're gonna have to remove the steering, the feed lines for the front and rear brakes, I'm assuming, and then the two rear brake lines off of the ABS unit before we drop the subframe, because that's those are all gonna bend. I'm the one to bend them. I need to be strong. Eminem? <laughs> Dude, is that you? <laughs> what up, what up? So for the moment, we're gonna keep ABS. I'm sure that somebody makes an ABS delete kit for the Corvette, and uh, that will simplify this engine bay even more. You know, Jarrett, 
<laughs> Nowadays, everybody wants to talk like they got something to say, but nothing comes out when they move their lips. It's a bunch of gibberish. Motherfuckers forgot. <laughs> God damn it. There we go. So we got those disconnected. Get those out of the way. They're out of stress. This one can go down with the whole subframe. That's safe. This one also will go down. It's not connected to the other set of subframe. So now we just have the steering, which we're gonna try and disconnect from there. I'm getting like one click at a time, but I'm able to loosen this part of the steering rack. It's interesting because they're like press fit in and then they're bolted in to hold the press fit in. Whoa! Totally caught that on camera because we expected that to happen. So I uh, pulled this up like that and it relieved the pressure off of there so there's no banging needed. As soon as I relieved the pressure, popped it and it's on the ground somewhere. So that leaves us with a steering column and it moves very, very easily. So good job there, Gia. We've currently been bracing the, <laughs> the bazooka, but it, as soon as we uh, put the engine on, we've been bracing the engine. So now we're gonna brace the engine from the back side, allowing us to get the subframe. Oh my God, I've never noticed this. Look at all of these washers on these bolts on the back of this engine. What the hell's going on back there? One, two, three, four, five, six. I have like <laughs> a million washers on them. So oh, what the hell? Yeah, that's Mazda. Okay. And we are pretty much ready to pull the subframe. The last thing catching us up is this lip on the bottom side for the upper control arm mounts. They were here, now they're holding themselves here. <laughs> One of my thoughts is just simply to uh, pop them out of their bushing and then replace these bushings. That's one, that could be one approach. <laughs> There's your weight distribution right there. <laughs> that actually works to our advantage at the moment. I don't like that it's doing that at all. We literally, I, to my credit, I don't like being uh, risky, this risky. We're on the correct jack points for the car. They're just, uh, it's kind of like, I've done this before when you're bench pressing and you're like, okay, you know what, I'm doing 225, which is 245 plates on one side. If you take both plates off of one side while you're re-racking the weights, the other side will pick up and then dump them off. You're not paying attention, you just take all the weights off of one side, the whole thing topples on the other side. And that's what we have here. The chassis of the car doesn't give a shit about the drivetrain. But yeah, if we had the, yeah. the drivetrain could actually keep the car in place. I'll tell you what though, I'm not getting under that car. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just, we'll leave it the way it is. You just take the jack and we're not using in it? In the back, good call. Ooh, good call. Uh, before we move forward, we're just gonna check these jack points, make sure they didn't rock. What? It did rock. That's even further back than it's supposed to be. It, it, it slipped. Look at this. It's worth looking at. It was directly on the point where you actually put the jack. Now it's on the body because it must have rocked. This is why you check it. So what I'm gonna do is pick up that rear further and then slide this back into the correct spot because all we need is the whole Corvette falling off of the jack stand. All jokes aside, which is why you notice I didn't go under the car, uh, I did have an older friend of mine actually die. He wasn't using jack stands. Um, and so you'll notice that even though we're, we're goofy and if the car fell off the jack stands, nobody was under it. But uh, even with these jack stands, you gotta watch out. I'm not trying to be daddy dom <laughs> and, and give like life lessons, but uh, I do actually know of one person who passed away uh, with just a jack. And look at that, even with jack stands, you still gotta be careful. So what we're gonna do with this, after a little bit of off-camera discussion, we are actually going to take the sway, anti-sway bar, lower control arm, steering rack, we have to take it all off. And the reason why is we're gonna be test fitting this so many times. Yeah, we can cut it and, and blanket all this off and scrap you know, metal flying, but it's really, when we go to build the actual engine subframe, we're just gonna be refitting it so many times and it is heavier than makes it quick. So uh, we're gonna super speed that, get right through that right now. Get you a cameraman that can do both. <laughs> <laughs> Taking apart this whole thing myself, like nice. always. I'm going in and playing video games while he works. Freaking the, the garage. Oh, that doesn't matter, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice having Jarrett pose near all my work. But uh, I just removed this. Let's set that aside. Uh, I removed these two bolts. 
Here's this cooler, which is still connected to the steering, which hopefully will just be removed. Is it oh, there we go. What a weird setup, though, for, for springs. It's basically a massive Apex steel spring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That isn't connected at all. Look at that. I thought that these were connected. That makes it a lot easier to service that. Okay, uh, you win a point back on that one. I thought they were connected. They just sit on there. That should do it. Uh, excuse you, I said that should do it. <laughs> <clears throat> that should do it. <laughs> ugh, ugh, ugh. There you go, two hundred dollar piece, some sweat, ugly haircut. We're gonna get cleaned up, and then we're gonna cut on those weird ass lines. <laughs> All right, you know what this means? Eye Pro, Ear Pro, spinning disc of death. It's time to cut. I've put it on our little mobile workbench. But what we're gonna try to do is cut as little as possible. Make one cut, two cuts, three, four, and five, and then. Uh, Put it up against the engine, see if that fits, and then fine tune it from there. Well, it's a little anticlimactic because it's aluminum, but uh, there's your first cut right through there. Solid. Uh, no, it's actually not solid, it's uh... a... <laughs> so, to Jared's point, uh, it is not solid. <laughs> I explained this to Jared off camera, but I'm gonna go to straight line and then go to another straight line and then add the curves in as needed. But because of the underlying brace right there, I just wanted to punch through first. Keep it simple. What we're gonna do is cut that nice deep run, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go parallel with this area or whatever, perpendicular parallel from here. You can see kind of an interesting piece right there, but we're going to start there and stick kind of behind this, whatever, deforming part of this. So we'll see if we can get away with taking as little material off as possible. I put down just a nice simple line that I can follow, but it, god damn, this stuff's thick. Aluminum does a decent job at dissipating heat, but still, I can feel the blades start to uh, get chunks. Like you can see like that right there. It's a chunk of aluminum kind of not welded, but it's stuck on there, which reduces the ability for this blade to cut. We've cut down a lot of the blade. Uh, for some reason right now, this blade is cutting beautifully. It went from being, you know, like dulled down to then just being able to just tear through it. It was actually melting through like butter. Only issue we have can't reach these deeper corners here. And then there's two underside. If we go to this side, this side. You can see, sadly, some of the best part of that uh, support is it has to go away. But we can always replate it. I'm not, I'm not worried about that, but I'll have to trim through this, 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 and this. There's our current blade, and there's uh, how much extra depth we can get with a brand new one. It's time for the simple tools. This is what I would have normally used all by itself, coolishly. This is gonna dull the shit out of this blade because these blades do not like aluminum. <laughs> I've learned that many years ago, but that's all we've got. Oh, there we go. We're through. Do you know which way cuts on these, Jarrett? Which way it cuts? Yeah. When I'm using this hacksaw, which way are you cutting? Uh, you're cutting that way. Pushing? Towards, towards, yeah, pushing. Or pulling. Pushing. Which way are you cutting? <laughs> are you, are... Uh, pulling? <laughs> Dude, you're good. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That wasn't easy. 
Wow. <laughs> That's a lot thicker than I thought. I did not think it was that thick. I thought it was all like this. You did it now. Yeah, it's it's fucked. Oops, almost. Okay. Yeah. That's a pretty uh, hard no, but it moved over. So we definitely need to center it. Did you see what I just did? You just moved the engine. Yes. <laughs> what I meant was it could be centered. That's a deep insight. <laughs> so what that means to me though is center it. Cut. Don't cut more on either side. Definitely both sides get more cutting, which is actually measurable at this point. We can measure this one. 13 inches, which we should have remembered from our previous videos. So 13 inches, that's about an extra half inch on each side. We're gonna super speed through this cut, so when I snap my fingers, I'll have an extra half inch off of each side. Uh, I doubt that this will be the final cut. It's looking more promising though, look at that. Okay, so the, that, look at this, this is what's important. That spot right there is fine. We need to cut into these corners so the engine can shift this way. <laughs> you fucking ruined the shot. <laughs> uh, we'll cut into this corner right here, because this is fine. Cut to here, that'll allow us to shift the engine over and get that side. That was actually a good cut. <laughs> oh my goodness. So here's what I'm thinking for these parts. It's kind of really just that, that radius right there is almost perfect enough. Now I wish you could take the blade and do that, but that's gonna take forever. So I'm gonna kinda do one of those things where you cut, 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 and then trim it down. But that's essentially what we're gonna do is that radius there, and something pretty similar right there. Actually, what I'm gonna do is actually do that to mark the area that I wanna cut, and then I am actually pretty happy with how that's turning out. If you guys have got better technique. I am completely all ears. This is the first time I've done anything like this, but safety being one of them, but technique, speed, uh, I'm all ears. I definitely read the comments. But we got a nice basic curve into here. We can clean it up even more. I deburred the top edge, probably created more birds. But let's see if that works. So I'm curious to see the first reaction to this. That. I could fine tune that very front edge. Right in the middle. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we keep fabricating things and they turn out actually pretty decent? <laughs> I'm very happy with that. You were just like, yeah, I'm gonna use the uh, angle of the angle grinder and blade and uh, it's a perfect match. Yeah. <laughs> so that little lip at the very front, we definitely need some tolerance right here. But I mean, the frame is up. So that's where the engine sits. Wow. Well, the engine's a little high, just a little bit, because we have it on the jack all the way up. But it's, the jack's kind of settled a little bit. That, that engine's pretty much at its ride height. Okay, we've successfully modified the subframe to fit the engine and the subframe in the same vehicle. Final positions for both of those. What we're going to do in the next video, which is really tomorrow for us, hopefully it's tomorrow for you in the videos, otherwise we got some other sick videos to show you. Our goal is to get points from here to here, potentially, or just welding onto this cast aluminum to get the engine mounts in the back. So we're gonna be fabricating something for back here. So this engine is mounted to the subframe. And that's the majority of the scariest part of the fabrication for this car. Not impossible, just the most critical part of this whole vehicle. All the intercooler piping, all that stuff can be fabricated. We can run it naturally aspirated from the throttle body, worst case. But this is the most important part and it's moving along perfectly.